Hello everyone and welcome to my video. I am Juan Medina from UPN and today I'm going to talk to you about kinematical irreducible manipulators. Well, though this video does not focus on the th complete theme, speaking about engineering themes, well, at the end of this video, at least you should be familiarized with the terms uh, related to. Okay, so let's begin. First, you may wonder uh, what it means uh, to be a kinematical irritant. Well, you should uh, you should know that normally robots and manipulators are created to do one specific task, whatever uh, that task is. Uh, in these cases, there are either those uh, manipulators which has been designed uh, with the minimal degrees of freedom or DOF uh, as you wish and, and there are those ones which a large number of, uh, of degrees of freedom well the last one are the, the last one are those what we call uh, kinematically redundant manipulators and this is uh, the main question of our discussion. Okay, at the beginning, uh, with minimum complexity manipulators, uh, has the advantage of the lower cost and maintenance. But however, it has the issue uh, that is more sensible to singularity problems and worker space obstacles. Well. Uh, the additional degrees ones, well, it has the advantage of the the flexibility, the motion, and well, uh, the permits several ways of do of doing uh, the properly task, and uh, and it's more it's easiest uh, it's easier to to avoid the forbidden regions. Okay, the problem of this method, what it is? Well, the complexity of the design. Obviously, uh, there are not a solution of all, the, of all the problems. So, if we want to gain of something, we have to lose of uh, other things. And in this case, it happens so. Well, let's... Uh, Let's understand this uh, with a simple example. For example, the human arm. Okay, uh, the human arm has uh, three junctions: the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. Well, the shoulder. How many uh, degrees of freedom has? Well, you can move uh, the shoulder up or down, uh, left or right, and and back and forward. So, how many degrees of freedom has? It has three degrees of freedom. The wrist, well, it's exactly the same. You can you can do this movement, which has two degrees of freedom, and you can do this movement, which has one. So, how many degrees of freedom has? It has three degrees of freedom. But what happens with the elbow? Well, the elbow has the problem uh, that you can only move in this direction. You can only bend and you can only stretch. So, you can, uh, it has uh, only one degree of freedom. Well, if you add all the degrees of freedom of the elbow, the shoulder and the wrist, uh, you have, you have, you have, uh, sorry, you have a uh, three degrees of freedom plus one degree of freedom plus three degree of freedom and that makes seven degrees of freedom well and you may wonder all those uh, degrees of freedom are strictly necessary well it, obviously it depends on the task you are doing but probably not for example think about you are playing the basketball and you uh, you receive uh, the ball from one teammate. What moves are your arms are doing? Only this. 
how many degrees of freedom this require? Well, probably not more than one or two. The movement of the elbow and perhaps a little bit of the shoulder. But the wrist, you are not really moving. And, and the, the opposite movement requires exactly the same. You are only the, here this to throw the ball or to pass to one mate, for example. So, uh, the kinematic and review the manipulators is exactly the same. Okay? Okay, uh, now let's talk about uh, the tools to analyze the, mo the movement of the robots. First, we have to talk uh, about the task direct kinematics. Well, basically, basically it's a model. You think uh, we have the task, uh, we have the device uh, that could be expressed as a rank of variables. One variable can represent a move in one direction or the move of on one angle. Okay? If you move uh, in one direction, you are subtracting one degree of freedom. Oh, and so then, in this space, how many movements can we do? Really only six. Three uh, per... Uh, 3 per translation and 3 per rotation. So, how many movements do we have? 6 in, in total. Okay, and then what we have to do is to see how many, uh, how many bodies uh, has our, our robot or manipulator and describe the relative displacement uh, between between each body. Okay, doing doing this uh, this task. Uh, what do we have? Uh, one square matrix, and then multiplying one matrix uh, per the final the the, f the initial vector. We have the final uh, movement of the robot. And that's what consists uh, the direct kinematic. Well, obviously, this doesn't always work. Uh, specific, specific, uh, spe speaking scientifically, sorry, it happens when the rank of matrix is less than the number of bodies. But probably you don't understand of this way if I explain this to you in such way. Well, you think, for example, you have uh, one device that has uh, too many or too less or too few joints. So, well, if you have one with too many, it probably won't move. And if you have uh, one less, it will move, but you you will not be able to to predict uh, this movement. That's basically the similarities. Okay, uh, now let's talk about the task inverse kinematic. The task inverse uh, kinematic. It is exactly the opposite of the task direct, direct one. From the point, from the final position, what we want to do is uh, to find out the relative position of the bodies. And the only task what we have to do is uh, to undo what we have done. Only that. What we what we did in in the task direct kinematic is exa is uh, exactly the opposite. Okay. And now let's talk about uh, an special case. Uh, Hyperredundant manipulators. Uh, well, hyperredundant manipulators are those with the, their numbers of degrees of freedom are much higher than the minimum uh, required to do some specific task. Well, these kind of manipulators really already exist in nature. Think about the bodies of snakes or the ostrich snakes, for example. They can move all, almost as if, uh, if they were uh, infinitely flexible. Well, the way 
way to design one hyper that manipulator we have uh, to understand that the numbers of body tend to be uh, absolutely huge so uh, because this explanation of the task direct kinematics uh, the matrix becomes hard enough to deal with so what we do well we seek other way to represent in reality for example uh, to approximate the lens uh, to null um, basically approximating to a curve um, examples of these of these uh, robots are uh, 17 degrees of freedom or the oct the oct film uh, continuum manipulator well all of them you can you can see them in, in in the images window okay well in conclusion kinematically reading the robots began uh, two decades two decades ago and keep on upgrading nowadays they can't they go they can't uh, so many fields such electronic manufacturing to put one example and and more, much more of them. Well, that was all. I hope you have enjoyed the, this video as I did. And thank you all. I see you soon.